climate crisis is ruining my sex life. I don't want to date. I refuse to bring a child into a world without a future. I never feel sexy. The dread of our race's inaction has defeated my libido. That is wonderful. I mean, I mean it's fucked up. Yeah. But, but like, incredible question. Same. So yeah, I, I really want to hear this the, more about this from you because I know you definitely, uh, you know, we were, I'm really sorry that we're taking, taking a while to answer your question. Yeah. If it was but like basically the last one on our previous show, we just decided to go for uh, this time. But um, to hell, I think we can make this distinction. I don't necessarily see myself as a future parent. Mm. I think if it's okay, I think it's okay for you to come. Yeah, I, 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 wanna, I wanna have kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, But yeah. I also recognize that I am subjecting them into a world far more terrible than ours. But I also, you know, when I'm like 85, kind of want someone to look after me. Well, yeah, so <laughs> my, I guess my hope and, uh, Utopia is that we'll have a bunch of friends with, I don't know, maybe a couple of kids, but not everyone has to have kids. Well, we need some young people to like carry us around when the tidal waves are coming. Well, we'll have robots by then or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, yeah. So, but has that is that has there been something uh, that you've experienced, like you felt that you can't necessarily. Uh, they don't see the future in parenting because of those issues. Well, because that's what's curious to me. Is the question is, or the, the statement is, the climate crisis is ruining my sex life. And then there's the thing that you don't want to have kids. So I'm wondering, like, is it ruining your sex life and the fact that everyone you're dating wants to have kids and it's a hard line no for you? Because, I, I mean, we can have sex in the apocalypse, you know, like, we can have sex as we're drowning in the tidal waves. You can have sex while you're covered in, I don't know, well, bad half of malaria, like... <laughs> My, my point is, like, you, you seem to be conflating sex with the long-term dating process that ends in children, and I'm wondering whether that's necess necessary? Yeah, so again, as always, and I'm sorry for repeating ourselves too much, it seems like there are just, like, some underlying, uh, you know, kind of confidence issues that perhaps you're then, I don't know, projected it on this particular uh, issue. I mean, really, especially in the mass depression that we're all living, a lot of the time, uh, the thing that relieves us from it, and that is not an anti-capitalist project in any shape or form, but it is, uh, you know, the butterflies and the tummy that you get after after hooking up with someone that you really, really fancy and that sort of stuff. So the fact that you're denying that to yourself is is a bit of a shame because it is one of those like undeniably like kind of like cross across gender, cross race, uh, internationally um, sort of international feeling that anyone can get and well, yes because you don't want to have kids but you're quite happy with your sex life like, uh, yes up and down and this <laughs> side to side yes well actually talking about kids and this is a thought that only came to me maybe two days ago i think well yeah first of all i just i think materially if i had like i don't know a house in islington you know and a part-time job perhaps perhaps but even but islington is a very nice lost. area of london for oh, yeah. our international audience apologies yes <laughs> uh but even beyond that i was like what is it? What is it that I just can't deal with? I just don't. And you know what I realized? It's like, I don't want to be a mother. I want to be a father. Mm. You know I what I mean? I think this all the time. Yeah. I don't want to be the one falling clothes, the one that, that nags them, the one that tells them what not to do. Exactly. I want to be the one climbing a tree with them, teaching them how to surf. Mate, like, like, okay, this is purely stereotypical uh, matters. Like, we can be understand there are some awesome dads out of that. We respect you, all of that, though I think there it is definitely uh, a minority. I don't know. Like, I have this, like, old dads and bastards thing, but I don't know. They just <laughs> they don't agree with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, like, I don't want to uh, change my body in any shape or form. Like, I'm, although I have insecurities, I'm quite happy with it as it is so i don't want to go through all of that stuff and then like all the breastfeeding etc don't want to go through that and then i would be more than happy to just go to my job do whatever i already know and and can come back home and then i still already get love and then the other person is doing kind of all the work and they are there it's their fault if the kid is fucked up sort of thing a little bit well obviously sometimes that's still but the thing like work. you often end up with is that the, the the partner that does go to the work and do the job thing ends up resenting the one staying at home because they don't recognise that raising a child is labour and they end up thinking that, oh, you just get to sit around with a baby all day, blah, 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 while but, I'm off earning a living. Yeah, yeah, but then the person that does, you know, earn a living, they can, then maybe take out a kid for a Saturday and they're like heroes. If you see like a dad outside with a with a child, everyone's like, oh, So would you like to be a divorced parent that only has your kid on weekends? I will, I don't, maybe I would just like to meet someone that has already had, like a teenager or probably adopt or whatever it is but like I just really don't want to go through the whole bodily thing like at all what about adoption then? yeah 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 because, like, there's yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna give me a child because of my material condition. but would you like see there. that as like a political project to adopt since there's like overpopulation and lots of kids that are not given the right circumstances I, I would 
be very wary of calling it a political project because like it is I, I would never pass judgment on anyone that gives birth no, to children. No, the reason why I'm framing it that way is like you have an analysis around like raising kids that detract people from like from engaging in active politics when they have kids they tend to like recluse. Oh, yeah, Whereas, I do have yeah. that opinion. <laughs> no, which is fine, but then I'm wondering like if you are seeing part of the political project as adoption as not just a good thing to do with a mother and blah blah blah, but also a thing to do that is like no, I think it would be more selfish for me, you know, the fact that, yeah, I don't want to ruin my body, so, like, hence I don't have to do that then. Like, I don't, I, I don't think I would, I would see it as, like, me saving someone or anything like that. I think mm. they would be saving me as much as I would save them, you know, uh, yeah. if I were to arrive to the point of wanting to do that. Sorry, this, again, we veered off of your question, but, okay, so... Maybe... It's interesting because I don't know what gender the questioner is. That's And true. yet, because they said that they didn't want to have kids, I assumed they were male. Same! Which is, like... Oh, my God, same! Yeah, which is it's actually... really fucked up, Yeah, actually. also because you don't want to have kids and you're a woman, so it's like, why did I jump to that conclusion? I totally... Did. Well, you know what, to be fair, a lot of the time that we get questions, they are, they do come from mm. cis dudes, like, that's why maybe that was a natural assumption. But, yeah, I totally had that, too, because the stereotype is of a dude not wanting Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Oh, okay. Another thing that's uh, it's kind of a bit sad that I've listened. I think I've uh, heard this in some like Financial Times podcast or whatever it was. And I'm not gonna give justice to this like Greek proverb or such. But there's this there was this saying back in like ancient Greece, where like so, someone has been noted of saying it's like, you know, the world is coming to an end. They are paying more to wrestlers than to the teachers. You know, that was in ancient Greece already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and they're. They, their thinking was like, that's it, you know, like, we're past any point of redemption. Maybe maybe we did peak in Asian Greece. So what I'm saying is that, like, although there are many, many reasons to be depressed, for sure, uh, I would, um, I would just, um, really think about the fact that we do usually find our ways to save us, you know, think of our parents' generation, there was a cold war, they thought they were going to be nuked, you know, the East and the West, all the time, mm. and then they survived, not to say that now is a better time in many other ways, but, you know, like, there, it's not all just despair, especially for us in the West, like, maybe it's actually really <laughs> fucked up for people to go for that, but for us in the West, like, there's probably going to be a way that we'll find, manage to, like, I don't know, automate everything around us, probably at a cost of the Global South and that, but, like, it's... Yeah, but also like people do tend to like reproduce more in times of crisis. Like think of like the boomer generation; they were all during war and post-war born, and that's the biggest generation of people ever born in like the Western world. So like the relationship between crisis and having children is not clear. The ethical question about whether you should have children in a crisis is harder. Like oh, as in like you're 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 giving birth to children that are likely to yeah. If you give birth to a child during the Cold War and you know that that kid could be lead to five and then die in a nuclear explosion, it's kind yeah. of an interesting choice to have made, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And yet, perhaps you're giving birth to like Greta Thunberg. You know right. what I mean? And also, I really hate like the logical conclusion of this argument is the really dodgy one, which is like you shouldn't have kids if you're not financially secure. You shouldn't have kids if you don't live in a stable place. Like yeah. fuck that like eugenics bullshit. As yes, well. absolutely. Like, yeah, then you we will only have people that are not depressed about these issues that are more than happy to i don't know like reproduce their their dodgy politics you, and you, you just stuff. have like the upper class capitalist who the only ones like allowed to have kids which is yeah like if the elon musks who get to go off in their spaceship and live on mars are the only ones having kids that's a fucking terrifying society yeah so perhaps you know, yeah i i do hope that uh it seems like you already have a lot of empathy and thinking towards the future as is so I really trust you to be an incredible parent if you want to. But also, I really don't know where you come from. Perhaps you are in a society, like it, your surroundings are full of people that everyone is having a child. For instance, my relatives in, in Bashkortostan and Tatarstan, you know, there, I'm, I'm 28, I'm without kids. I'm already like a hopeless, a hopeless yeah, you're case. Oh, absolutely. Like it, it's, it's, it's gone. So they really, they judge me massively for not having children. And I imagine if perhaps you're in a similar environment, you do think like, that's it, I'm fucked. And, and in which case having... the dating, the assumption that by dating someone you end up having kids is stronger than I think it is in our society where you date but you don't expect that to happen unless like blah blah blah, yeah. four years down line, this, 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 like, yeah. if not, like I don't see a problem with dating and not wanting to have kids and I don't think it's that much, but it also depends on your age as well, like, I know that like mid and late in your 30s a lot of people only want to date if they see the prospect of kids with that person, so that makes it harder, but I do think there are people that don't want to have kids and you will be able to find them and have like a great sex life a great relationship without that being a part of it like yeah yeah so um i mean okay should we go, go and have a look at their particular words and that that we need to oh yeah let me reread it just be really quickly mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, you know, crisis can happen wh whenever, you know, crisis used to happen all the time and it's just the one that we're going through right now. Oh, this, this bit, I never feel sexy, the dread of our race's inaction has defeated my libido. So you yeah. literally don't want to have sex because of the climate, not just because of the kids thing. That's you see, a... I, I feel difficult to believe that in a sense of like, uh, that one is so devoted and one's politics are so pure that that, that completely overtakes Maybe that's a Freud in me, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't necessarily believe that, like, the lack of selfishness in a sense, you know, because, uh, you know, a, a, a joy of, of, of a consensual, romantic or intimate relationship is, 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 is one that is, is our only hope a lot of the time. You know? And also, like, maybe this is not to like, say that we are not very visible of asexual people. Right? Yeah. But like this is maybe my like privilege as a person who's not living in like hyper crisis scenario right now. I mean, in a, like meta sense, I am. But like, there to me is something like it's kind of the narrative that we often have of like that feeling when it's us against the world, which is a very like powerful like sexual and romantic drive. Yeah. And like when it's literally the world yeah, imploding yeah. and it's me and you. I mean, that's in every fucking apocalyptic romantic movie ever is like the two people and the world exploding and. And I find, with yeah, I think it's probably just my privilege and like fetish nation of talking, but I find that a very sexy and appealing narrative. For real, yeah. Like, and then, like, I imagine again, because we don't really know your circumstance. Perhaps you're literally writing from like a war, <laughs> a war zone, or somewhere where like the, you, you know, the, the an island that is disappearing, yeah. and like, yeah, you just you can basically change this all around you and of course you'll just be depressed and I mean, if we're going down let's go down hand in hand but then yeah that's, that's so it's... crime thinking i know sure. it is. it's super crime <laughs> thinking and it's super yeah over romanticized but i guess i'd rather not be, maybe it's something selfish i'd rather not be alone when everything's going to shit i would rather be with someone yeah and also i mean i would like to think that you can find you can engage in activism that will perhaps bit by bit you will feel that you're part of a change and if you can meet someone in that environment you know chances are if you'll meet someone that feels very similar to you that will be a big turn on mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean even that like nihilism sometimes if, if you meet in between two people and like both of them go like yeah no 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 yeah. all right let's kiss now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds dumb but you know like i it's mean perhaps finding kind of other people that that do like do feel very similar i mean i, I have the same hopelessness and despair and yeah. even if you talk about that and like connect about that that's still a really fucking strong connection yeah 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 for sure and it's just like spaces for um i think there are still i think that is the only thing a lot of the time that keeps me going is like a feel of and sense of pride that i know i am changing things and, and like i know my existence is of utility yeah to the you're, world. you're net good right? yeah i'm a net good <laughs> i like to think um and that and that pride uh, then then gives confidence, you know, and gives and, and it gives a certain sort of like a a wish to share it. I wish to share my body. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I wonder if perhaps there's an insecurity that you're not doing enough for it, which is kind of sounds really terrible. But um, but then again, what are you meant to do? Well, you separate yourself into like middle of nowhere, and then and then to see the world burn but i am i don't know i don't think the it's gonna be a slow thing it's not like this big movie apocalypse scenario yeah that we are thinking of yeah and as long as like everyone's saying like 2050 2050 it's not like the tsunami is going to happen in 2050 and that's the human race wiped out but okay but why is this happening right because there's the the capitalist class is 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 in control right now right so if we spread anti-capitalist propaganda effectively enough enough of us if you do around your surface if they do it around your their surface and i'm not trying to do this whole like individual action thing because a lot of the time it's not working but you know like but you can change minds on an individual level and then those people go off and do it too that is like a valid thing basically systems don't exist people do yeah. right so let's just get on with attempting to change that and yes hopelessness where you think we don't get into burnout situations all the time now like even our show is a is is like a, is is a is a sign of disparity that there is. What we're doing with the show is like it's not definitely not giving us any credit and 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 uh, no not materially not socially and uh, because there is a crisis of of you know of of, of I suppose cis yeah. mental health yeah, yeah like mas whatever masculinity etc you know so so we're Just always on the defensive as well so. 
whatever would be your way to perhaps gain self-confidence from um, changing your like we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna say that you and you alone can stop the climate crisis, but you can get involved in projects that feel meaningful and do like, yeah, like a net good yeah. on a on a small scale, and that's super. I don't know. As long as it's not extension. <laughs> Did you see that they now have like XR police Facebook group and XR landlords Facebook group? I thought that I thought the landlord one was a troll. No, the one I that was like talking so. about tenants and talking about how like. Um, Oh, what was it? It was like how landlords are actually the ones who care most about the environment because they actually have like ownership of the land, whereas tenants don't care about the environment oh, because exactly. they're just renting a space. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a troll Mate, post. like these people have brand guidelines, these people have PR agencies. They could get a website, like on our website, Facebook group, shut down because it's using their brand. Like, they're not doing that. I have a bad feeling it might just be them. Anyways, we're now very involved. Oh, extremely important work some of it that it does yeah i actually have mixed on xr because like, xr local like penzance has an xr group near the school at galawan fine and i'm like you know fine. what if they've galvanized like climate activism in the far southwest they are not often to get arrested on mass fine. it's like sure. the london centric met fetishizing xr yes. branch that we have an issue yes. with Agreed. because don't deliberately get people arrested you irresponsible scum absolutely yes yes that's 